Welcome to CBN 4's Primetime News. I am your presenter, Sheena Harry. Getting into the news, first off, Dr. Ranford Paul Ricketts, who has been employed as a medical officer in Dominica since 1986, has been appointed Special Advisor on Health and Ambassador at Large. The Dominica government announced Dr. Paul's engagement in a press release and noted that the engagement took effect in February of this year. In the new special assignment, Dr. Ricketts will help to develop appropriate strategies that will strengthen the healthcare system in Dominica, especially on matters pertaining to the delivery of care services. And as the new special advisor on health, Dr. Ricketts will also perform several other duties under the directives of the Minister for Health and Environment and the Cabinet. Delegates from the Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs, Permanent Secretary Mrs. Sylvani Burton and the Dominica Association of Local Community Authorities, Chairman Mr. Yoland John Jules and Administrative Officer Ms. Vincien George attended a three-day conference in Trinidad and Tobago where the launch of the Commonwealth Local Government Forum Regional Program on the role of a local government in localizing the SDGs was realized. And these representatives from the local and central government from Antigua and Barbuda, the Bahamas, Belize, Guyana, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and Dominica met to discuss the key issues facing local government in the region in playing its role as a development actor. And they highlighted the role of local government in ensuring people's in ensuring people-centered sustainable development and welcome the SDGs as a framework for delivering global and national priorities at the local level. They highlighted the fact that many existing local government responsibilities will contribute directly to achieving the SDGs and a number of useful tools and approaches to support local governments to play a full role in development and localizing the SDGs were also discussed. Also making our headlines, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt officially welcomed 37 Ecuadorian teachers who are pursuing English at the Dominica State College. The Prime Minister welcomed the teachers and noted that this partnership will further strengthen ties between the governments of Dominica and Ecuador. Notwithstanding the fact that we would have established relations not too long ago, but the relationship is very strong and very solid. So we welcome you to Dominica here as uh, brothers and sisters, as, as Dominicans. We do not see you as Ecuadorians and ourselves as Dominicans. You, you, you're part of our family. The Prime Minister informed that the Ecuadorian government took the decision to have the teachers learn English in the Caribbean countries, an initiative which Dominica gladly welcomes. Skerritt also noted that government has assigned the agreement to the Dominica State College as the implementing agency of that agreement. And Dr. Peters, the president of the State College, for readily accepting that, um, that offer and suggestion and he was, he's been very helpful in ensuring the successful uh, nature of the, of the agreement between Dominica and, and Ecuador. Skerich urged the teachers to return to Dominica on vacation subsequent to the completion of their course and hoped that the two countries will continue to uphold the excellent relations that exist between them. And the Dominica State College has announced that it is now certified to teach English as a second language through its TESL program. President of the college, Dr. Donald Peters, says that this initiative is evidence of the tremendous growth that has occurred within the institution. What is more important, this initiative by the Prime Minister has certainly brought a new perspective for us at State College 
as indicated, we are now an international institution in just 13 years. The college is just 13 years, and in their 13th year, they are already attracting and educating international students. The 37 teachers from Ecuador who will study English here are said to be coping well. Peters went as far as to call the relationship a match made in heaven. In terms of these students, they are uh, uh, ambassadors for their country, but they are very good. We'd like to thank them. They, I see them in the market everywhere. They are part of the community. They have adjusted well. And to the people of Dominica, I want to thank them, too, because they have had very little problems in Dominica, there are a few hiccups, but um, their um, experience here has been good, both in, on campus and off campus. And um, so I, I would like to thank the community that they live in for their cooperation. It is important as a nation that we treat them well and respect them because um, we expect to get more. And, uh, he further stated that he hopes that the students' stay here will be an exemplary one so they can return to Ecuador and boast of Dominica's hospitality so that not only will other students come for school, but Ecuadorians will choose Dominica as a vacation destination. Dominica's oil spill contingency plan has begun its review at a three-day workshop which commenced this morning. And the workshop is an initiative of the Maritime Administration Unit and the Ministry of Public Works in collaboration with the International Maritime Organization and the Regional Marines Pollution Emergency in Information and Training Center. The workshop was intended for senior government officials from national authorities with a responsibility for implementation and enforcement of international convention for the prevention of pollution from ships who are well versed in issues related to oil spills and oil spill prevention. Facilitator of that project, Paul Lazzani, says that with tourism being one of the largest sectors of Dominica's economy, preservation of the environment should remain a priority. Glad that Dominica gets it, and that's one of the reasons why we're here today, is to help to preserve the marine environment, um, to be prepared in case there's ever an, an oil spill incident. Uh, and in fact, a lot of the work that we're going to do in the next today and, and in the next couple of days uh, applies across all different kinds of, of incidents, not just oil spills. But it can help prepare for things like hurricanes, um, which I know you have a lot of recent experience in. And he explained that it is the job of his organization to ensure that Dominica remains in compliance with international laws with the main focus on environmental laws. Uh, really, if you boil it down, two goals for our activities here this, this week. And the first is to, to raise awareness and preparedness for an oil spill. And that's a, a big part of what we're doing here today. Um, you are here because you are representing the different uh, industries in some cases and, and ministries and departments uh, within the government. Um, you, I encourage you to, to, if you don't know each other, it's a small island, you probably already know each other, but to have those conversations today about what would we do in the case of a late major oil spill. Um, and you communicate now before you actually have a, a major incident. Would you want and he further stated that the second goal is to develop a contingency plan for Dominica for a major environmental disaster as it regards to oil. Also in the news, Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, is urging all those who borrow from financial institutions, particularly the Agricultural, Industrial and Development Bank, to make a more dedicated effort to repay their loans. The Prime Minister, speaking at the annual general meeting of the bank, explained how the aid bank functions, stating that it belongs to the state. And by virtue of it being a creature of the state, it means that all of the liabilities belong to the state. So for example, the bank borrows money from international regional financial institutions. In almost 100% of those cases, the loans must be guaranteed by the state with what is called a sovereign guarantee, which means, in essence, that if the bank fails or is unable 
to pay its creditors, then the Treasury of Dominica has a legal obligation to repay the sums borrowed by Skerrick stated that the government also provides direct financing to aid bank and made a direct plea to all those who have loan agreements with the bank to respect those agreements because delinquent loans affect the entire nation. Legal agreements. If we borrow, there is a responsibility to repay. And if you have, if you're experiencing difficulties in repaying, then you must go to the bank and engage the bank in discussions to see whether they can refinance or extend your loan repayments. But by neglecting the responsibility and being also publicly defiant of those, um, of your dereliction of, of responsibility and duty, is not sitting well with our country. Because you are in fact denying more job creation in the country. You're denying more entrepreneurs to be uh, the Prime Minister noted that the bank is in discussions with a bank over in China to borrow monies that would be a major plus to the Dominican economy as the bank will borrow at a 2% interest rate and lend to clients at no more than a 6% interest rate. Partners in Development the strategic theme coined for the PDV Caribe Dominica Limited Agent Appreciation Day and Workshop as that company continues to touch lives and transform the socio-economic landscape of Dominica. At the PDV Caribe Dominica Conference Room in Jimit, agents were recognized for partnering in the development of the country as revenue derived from cooking gas sales goes towards social and infrastructure projects and programs focused on improving the lives of the most vulnerable here in Dominica. Several agents were acknowledged for their achievements in LPG sales. Kelvin Francis from the Western District, Priscilla Lawrence of the Eastern District, Matilda Christian representing the Northern District, and they were all awarded for having achieved highest sales throughout 2015. Cheryl Blaise, who represented the Southern District but was not present at the time, was also recognized for achieving best sales, while Geraldine Paquette of Maho was awarded Most Outstanding Agent. A 34-year-old man of Focoli has been fined $30,000 for possession of over 9,000 grams of marijuana with intent to supply. Glennis Rowan Charles pleaded guilty to the offense when he appeared before Magistrate Schumer Blaise. Police Prosecutor Sergeant Davidson Cadet informed that the drugs have an estimated street value of $20,000. According to information presented in court by Sergeant Cadet, members of the police force, acting on information that they received, went to Makushri last weekend and found the defendant in possession of marijuana. Charles was then arrested and taken to the police headquarters in Rosu. Attorney at law Don Yearwood Stewart represented Charles and pleaded with the magistrate not to impose a custodial sentence since her client is a first time offender and has not wasted the court's time by pleading guilty. Magistrate Blaise stated that since the defendant is not known to the court and has pleaded guilty, he would not be given a custodial sentence. Charles was fined $30,000, of which 8000 is to be paid forthwith. In default of that payment, he is to spend three months in prison. 10000 of that of the remainder is to be paid within six months, and in default of that payment, he is to spend three months in jail. The balance of the $12,000 is to be paid within one year, and in default of that, he will spend three months in prison. And with that, we come to the end of the Primetime News Package. If you've missed any of our stories, you can catch up on CBN4.com or on our Facebook page. And if there's ever a story you'd like us to cover, feel free to email us at CBN4news at gmail.com. Until our next broadcast, I am Sheena Harry. 
Thanks for watching.